Well, it is a, cr a critical day, really, for the future of the yeah. president's reelection effort. We are going to see President Joe Biden holding a news conference tonight. And as you all likely know by now, this appearance comes as more close allies of Biden are pushing for him to drop out of the race and allow another candidate to step forward. So far, 10 House Democrats and one Senate Democrat have directly called on the president to exit the race. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer released a statement Wednesday night addressing the calls for Biden to step aside, saying, quote, as I have made clear repeatedly, publicly and privately, I support President Biden and remain committed to ensuring Donald Trump is defeated in November. Now, we have team coverage for you on this this afternoon. And Nancy Cordes, as you see on the left, is standing by at the White House. But first, let's get to CBS News congressional correspondent Nicole Killian bringing us reaction from Washington. And Nicole, as we've mentioned, we're now hearing from at least one Democratic senator calling for Biden to drop out. Why is this significant and more than just chatter that we heard immediately following the debate? Well, so far, uh, many Senate Democrats have been holding their fire, so it is significant that now Peter Welch has become the first Democratic senator uh, to call on the president to step down. He uh, put this in a Washington Post op-ed in essence saying, you know, we can't unsee what we saw in the debate. Uh, but I would note, too, that on the House side, we continue to see defections and the latest being Congresswoman Hillary Skolton, who is a frontline member. Uh, she just moments ago uh, announced that she believes that the president should step aside, arguing that it's important to put forth the strongest candidate possible, someone who can not only win, but also govern. How is this divide within the Democratic Party uh, affecting um, both their messaging to voters and the navigation in, in terms of how they're moving forward? Well, I think for now, a lot of that messaging is, you know, you know they're treading water. Uh, you know, what a number of Democrats uh, keep yeah. telling us is they're trying to turn the conversation to the best of their ability uh, back to the former president and the importance of defeating him, you know, saying very little as they can about the president, but again, kind of focusing on defeating former President Donald Trump, continuing to make the case that democracy is at stake and continuing uh, to point for instance, to this uh, Project 2025 that uh, some of his aides have drafted as a possible plan in terms of how a second Trump term may operate. So, uh, you know, those things they say are uh, critical to defeat. That is why they continue to argue that Democrats have to win in November, but still making that argument by keeping arm's length from the president right now. And Nicole, uh, Team Biden need to win over delegates, especially ahead of the Democratic convention next month. I understand that some calls have been made from the president directly to them uh, amid all this. What can you tell us about that? Well, look, at this point, I mean, the president has to shore up support wherever he can. And we've seen that uh, across the board, whether that was meeting with labor leaders uh, this week, obviously, you know, calling members of Congress here, speaking, for instance, with the Congressional Black Caucus. As you know, I'm standing right now outside of the DSCC, which is the campaign arm for Senate Democrats, where we expect a trio of Biden campaign advisors to uh, brief uh, senators ahead of that, uh, Jen O'Malley, Dillon, uh, the campaign manager has already put out a memo saying that the campaign realizes they are clear-eyed about what happened during this debate. But at the same time, you know, they continue to argue that the numbers they're seeing shows this race as a toss-up. So I imagine that could be some of the argument uh, that they make to the Senate Democrats hoping to stem any more potential defections. All right. Nicole Killian with the latest for us there from Washington. Thank you. CBS News Chief White House Correspondent Nancy Cordes is there for us. So, Nancy, let's talk about tonight's press conference. How high are these stakes for President Biden? Uh, the stakes are quite high because uh, there are Democrats who are basically watching everything he does, every unscripted event over the past two weeks, uh, to get a sense of whether what they saw uh, at the debate two weeks ago was an isolated incident or whether it's an indication of a, a fraying of his ability to appear in a, an extemporaneous setting. And so the stakes are high, and the, the biggest challenge for this White House is that if he uh, has a, a good press conference, there are still going to be many Democrats who say, okay, well, that went fine, but what about the next one? Uh, whereas if he has a, a, a 
a bad moment, uh, a, a question that, that gets poorly answered. Uh, there are critics in his party who will say, see, this is exactly why I have concerns. So that's the ongoing challenge for the White House. Uh, they are, are, are trying to downplay the stakes by um, uh, arranging for him to go to Michigan tomorrow, put him back out on the campaign trail. He's doing a network interview on Monday. And basically, the argument they're going to make is he's plowing forward regardless. Speak to us more about that strategy by the campaign, Nancy, because I think earlier this week on Monday you had mentioned that you had not seen a time when the president had called into uh, a cable channel like Morning Joe, kind of off the cuff, to, to speak on his behalf and defend against these allegations that he's too old or frail. What's the significance of next week's additional network interview? What is the strategy from the campaign? Right. I mean, the president hasn't done that many sit-down network right. television interviews in four years. And now, uh, suddenly, he's doing an interview with Lester Holt of NBC News uh, about nine days after doing an interview with George Stephanopoulos of ABC News. So basically, uh, part of the strategy appears to be, hey, you know, watch how he does in this next event and this next event and sort of hope that uh, by the time that interview takes place that the attention of the political world won't be that focused on the president anyway, that people will be paying more attention to the Republican National Convention that is set to get underway in Milwaukee next week, where former President Trump is expected to announce his running mate. Yeah. Um, let's talk about that, uh, or, or rather, we're going to talk about that in a little bit, but, but let's also talk about the fact that all of the NATO leaders are actually there in Washington, mm -hmm. D.C. Do we have any insight into how all of this churn in the Democratic Party is being viewed on the international stage? Well, it's, you can imagine that it's something that is on the minds of many of the world leaders who are getting the first opportunity um, in, in a few weeks or longer, uh, depending on which country they are from, to see President Biden face to face and make their own assessments. And in fact, uh, just today, the, the president of Finland, which was recently admitted into NATO in large part because of the urging of President Biden, uh, kind of returned the favor. And he said that he's been around President Biden a number of times in the past 48 hours, and he didn't see anything uh, that would give him concerns about the president's uh, uh, stamina, his, his focus, his intellect, or anything else. And so, um, you know, that is an interesting sidebar going on here, is that um, th these world leaders, the members of their delegations, they're also gathering their own impressions, talking to journalists from their own home countries. And so you would imagine uh, both this week, but also as time goes on, we'll learn a little bit more about their impressions and what they experience behind the scenes. And just in our last few seconds, Nancy, you know, beyond the, the wrapping up of, of NATO and this key press conference, which I believe is at 6.30 p.m., um, what else is on the president's schedule today? Uh, you know, he's had a really packed day. It's hard to see how he's going to get much uh, yeah. prep time in for this press conference because he's got uh, three or four big working sessions uh, where he's going to be sitting down with uh, other NATO leaders on a variety of topics, and he's sitting down with Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky. So it is really a packed day that began at 10 o'clock this morning at NATO. All right. Nancy Cordes there for us at the White House. Thanks, Nancy.